this is Bruce. Welcome, everyone. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So the central uh, challenge that I'm attempting to address with this webinar uh, when it comes to retaining walls is that there are a lot of different types of retaining walls out there, and they have their own um, standards and their own sort of division of response design uh, responsibilities between the different uh, consultants who are involved. Um, and so knowing how one type of retaining wall design is approached doesn't always translate over into other types of retaining walls. And so my overall objective today is to try to give you an understanding of what are all the sort of uh, commonly used uh, retaining wall systems that are out there as well as some of the others that are less common but still useful in certain cases and um, give you enough information that you can uh, when you're working on a project where you're trying to figure out the best retaining wall solution, give you the tools that you can compare the different types and know what standards to apply and what your responsibilities are as the structural engineer versus um, the responsibilities of the other parties and get you uh, started in the, in the right direction. So um, that's basically just another way, I think, of saying uh, what's listed there in the four points on that PowerPoint slide. So I'm going to move on to get started here. So in the first section, I'm going to talk about the different uh, types of retaining wall systems that are out there. And in doing this, I've divided it up, the discussion, into two basic types, fill walls, where fill is placed behind a retaining wall, versus cut walls, where the, the wall is created by cutting into an existing slope. So first of all, in fill for fill walls, uh, I've further subdivided it into what I've designated, in my opinion, as the common systems versus the less common systems. So on this first slide, I'm just listing out the relatively common systems, and I won't repeat them here because I'll have separate slides for each of them on the next uh, next section of slides here. So uh, of course, cast in place concrete cantilever walls are common. Uh, mechanically stabilized earth or MSC walls, which are proprietary um, wall systems that use reinforce horizontal reinforcing layers in the fill behind um, is pretty common. Concrete crib walls are another uh, proprietary system that's relatively common. They rely on their own mass, the, the mass of the concrete um, for stability, as well as fill that's placed within the compartments that are created within this concrete structure uh, to, to provide uh, mass for stability. And then uh, uh, proprietary concrete, I should have said actually concrete gravity block walls, uh, which are um, uh, using what look a lot like ecology blocks, for those of you who are familiar with what those are, but they're big concrete blocks that um, stack up and rely on their own mass for stability. <coughs> And then there are a bunch of the less common ones, but are still he helpful in certain situations. And again, I'm, I have a slide for each of these. So um, cast in place or precast concrete gravity walls, as opposed to the gravity block walls I talked about in a minute ago. So these are walls that are not proprietary. They're custom designed. They rely on um, their own mass for stability, as opposed to like a conventional uh, retaining wall that has a footing that, that, that uses the weight of the soil over the footing for stability. Uh, where you'll commonly see these used these days is for uh, what are called retaining barriers along highways. And um, they are actually can be relatively cost effective, uh, even though they use more concrete for the amount of retained height that they provide. They can be fairly cost effective if they're either slip formed or precast because the amount of labor is relatively low and the uh, there's only one concrete pour as opposed to the multiple pours for the footing and then the stem that you would have for a traditional retaining wall. Um, so uh, they can be a good option in certain cases. Uh, another one that's in the proprietary category, precast concrete modular walls that are somewhat similar to uh, MSE or concrete crib walls and that they have a, 
a precast concrete facing and then an element that reaches back into the backfill behind, um, and that's what provides the stability.